How pilots lean for cruise flight is a very complicated and controversial topic. So controversial that even me saying it's controversial without definitively taking one side or the other will be seen as controversial. Since our recent video on leaning the mixture for high altitudes generated a lot of interest, we thought to follow up on the concept of leaning and look at how the G1000 makes the task a bit easier with some precision measurements. Let's have a look at what's going on inside the cylinders when you lean the mixture. At full rich, we have enough fuel molecules in the cylinder to mix with the available air molecules to produce power, and we also have a bunch of fuel left over. This is great for takeoff close to sea level because it ensures we won't be starved for power with the throttle full, and the extra fuel even has a cooling effect on a hot engine. One of the ways we measure engine heat is through the exhaust gas temperature. This is the heat of the air being expelled from the cylinder through the exhaust valve. Let's say at cruise RPM with the mixture fully rich, we have 1300 degrees on the EGT. As we bring the mixture control back to lean it out, we have fewer fuel molecules now. Remember how that extra fuel acts as a coolant? Without it, the temperature of the exhaust gas goes up. You won't see a change in RPM right away though because it's just extra fuel you're taking away. There's still plenty of fuel for the available air to produce power. If we lean it back further, now there isn't enough fuel to produce as much power. Our power output, read off the tachometer here, decreases. The engine produces less power and less heat, so the EGT goes down. If we slowly put the mixture back in, we find that precise ratio of fuel to air, which is just enough for power production, without any excess for cooling, and our EGT gets its peak temperature. This may seem like the optimal setting, but most aircraft manufacturers don't recommend running at peak EGT. The reason is that temperatures this high can indicate an excessive cylinder pressure, which can shorten piston life. So where do you go from here? You have two choices. You can enrich the mixture to an EGT below peak. This is called rich of peak. Here we've moved it in and are now 75 degrees below peak on the rich side. Or we can go back to peak and lean it a bit more getting 75 degrees on the lean side of peak. What's the difference? In very general terms, flying rich of peak uses more fuel per hour, keeps the cylinder cooler, but can lead to buildups of carbon deposit over time as the unburned fuel remains in the chamber. Flying lean of peak is more economical as it burns less fuel per hour, but it can be more difficult to control temperatures in engine wear. Follow your aircraft manufacturer's guidance on how to lean for cruise flight, but whether you choose rich or lean of peak, the G1000 can help you achieve your settings. Let's see how. Here, we've leveled off in cruise on our Beechcraft Baron, which has a constant speed propeller. We've brought the throttle back to a power setting of about 23 inches of manifold pressure and screwed the propeller back to about 2400 RPM. Next, we'll do the mixture. Let's push the engine soft key on the MFD bezel. We'll then choose lean. We have temperature readouts for all six cylinders, one column for each one. The set of columns on top is for EGT, while the bottom set is CHT, cylinder head temperature. There are temperature probes for each cylinder. They're different temperatures because the cylinders towards the rear of the engine don't get as much air flowing over them and tend to run hotter. To find peak temperature, we want to look at the hottest temperature, and that's what this system will help us with. Then we'll push assist. We can then begin bringing the mixture control back, watching the EGTs slowly begin to rise as we reduce the amount of fuel that's cooling the engine. We hit peak at 1170 degrees. As we lean further, the temps start to drop off, and there's a bar now over each cylinder column noting peak temp. There's also a figure next to the delta peak showing how far below peak we are. If we then begin to enrich, the temps go up back to peak, and then fall off again. We're looking for 75 degrees rich of peak. We get there and we're done. We're now flying 75 degrees rich of peak. Notice the power is still about 23 inches where it was when we were at full peak. We're only burning 16 and a half gallons per hour though. We can go the other way and lean out to 75 degrees lean of peak. Notice there's no change in power, but with the flow down to 12.2 gallons, we're sipping fuel. However you choose to lean, the G1000 Lean Assist can help you. One word of advice, don't obsess too much over these numbers while you're leaning. Without advanced controls like FADEC or something, it's very hard to get the right EGT temps, so don't linger on adjusting the mixture knob for too long where you might be running too close to peak EGT, damaging your engine. Make a fairly quick adjustment and err on the cooler side of peak EGT, whether it's rich or lean. 
Think of this more like a campfire and less like a super advanced nuclear reactor you have to meticulously manage. Mechanics have seen pilots cause more trouble than they intend to by getting tinkeritis with the controls. We did this exercise in less than a minute, and we could have done it even faster if we weren't demonstrating the principle. Consult your aircraft specs and your mechanic for proper leaning techniques, but if you're flying a G1000 NXI like this, you can use lean assist to achieve your intended settings. We have a full G1000 transition course available at Flight Insight, along with a full suite of ground schools. Check them out today at the link here and in the description.